Good morning, my dear students. Today, the topic for our discussion is going to be food production. This topic will be covered by me in two lectures. The, today, half of that will be done, and in some other class, other half will be done. So, what do we mean by the word food production? The food is produced by the plants, you know that, and animals or the human being, they cannot produce any food. For that purpose, in biological sense, always only the plants are called as producers and all the other organisms existing in this world are called as consumers. So, all the animals, including the human being, we are all only consumers and the plants alone are the producers. They, they become the producers because of their innate ability and the capacity to produce their food with the help of the sunlight, water, carbon dioxide and sunlight. Now, if you are also having that capacity, then there won't be any problem in this world. But we don't have chlorophyll. And since we don't have a chlorophyll, we cannot produce any food material. So, the food production is done only by the plants and we, the human being and animals, we depend on the plants for our nutrition, for our nourishment and for our welfare. Okay. So, how this uh, food production is uh, taking place is what we are going to see in the next few slides. The world's uh, human population which was only 1 billion during 1850 had reached 7.6 billion around the year December 2017. So, this is the latest uh, demographical data. It was a uh, 7.6 billion. That is uh, 7 followed by 6 and then 9 zeros. Billion is 1000 million is equal to 1 billion. So, it is a uh, billion is 1 followed by 9 zeros. Okay, fine. So, it was only 1 billion during the year 1850 and now it is a 2017. That means approximately 950 and 150 years, 167 years. That's all. The difference is 167 years and in this 167 years, 7.6 times the human population has grown. This dramatic increase in population, otherwise called as population explosion. We don't use the word population increase, population expansion and the population explosion is used because if it is going at this rate there is a danger that it may sometimes explode we are using the word explosion only for a bomb okay so you say a bomb has exploded now this word is being used for population also so there is a danger that the population may get exploded it has created its impact not only on the environment but also on the food production. So, whatever the food demand was there by the 1 million people, now the demand is there by 6.7 million people. You know very well that uh, uh, this increase in the need for the food has resulted in a uh, very important urge for improving the crops with the very same crops that we had and very same productivity that we had during 1850 
we will not be able to feed so many mouths in the world okay so that necessity that automatically necessitated the production or finding out a new way to produce more crops more yield that was our aim after a few years half of this 7.6 billion people live in poverty and one fifth of this population suffer due to malnutrition you see that is the problem why there is a malnutrition the malnutrition is because of the insufficiency of the good food the food that the children are eating today they don't have sufficient protein they don't have sufficient vitamins so because of this so many uh, vitamin deficiency diseases are produced protein deficiency diseases are produced in the children so why this is uh, taking place because the population has increased when the population increases we are not able to feed all the people with a good quality of the food so there is uh, there is increase of uh, diseases and increase of all the other problems also so half of this 7.6 billion people live in poverty and one fifth of this population suffer due to the malnutrition increase in population unplanned utilization and migration towards cities and urban areas has resulted in the degradation of the environment this is a very important point see increase in population is one problem the problem number 1 now in added to that problem unplanned industrialization this is a very important one because without a planning we are making only one section of our environment more suitable for the industry that we call as a cities today cities and towns metropolitan cities etc so there only all the industries are concentrated when all the industries are concentrated in one place people try to migrate towards that place as a result of that most of the villages are emptied nowadays and you get maximum population in one part of the area let's imagine that this is the place where the people are living in one area more people are living and in other area people they don't live here the density is very much in some other areas it is too too much and in some other areas you don't get that much population these are all called cities and villages cities and towns and this is called the villages so this results in the degradation of the environment and imbalance in the environment so increase in the population unplanned industrialization point number 2 has resulted in the migration of the people which has all together all put together has resulted in a very important problem what is called as degradation of the environment so india is a mainly an agricultural country as it was stated by our nation father gandhi ji he told india is an agricultural country and nearly 70 or 75 percentage of the people are living in the villages he was a making a remark agriculture accounts for approximately 33 percentage of india's gdp and employs nearly 62 percentage of the population so 62 percentage of the indian population is employed in the agricultural practices see more than half of the people more than half of the people are engaged in agricultural practices and it accounts for 33 percentage of gdp after india's independence this is the condition before independence see after independence 
one of the main challenges facing this country was that of production of enough food for the ever increasing population so after independence the main challenge for us is main challenge for our country is production of enough food we don't have enough food for all the people who are living so we have to produce more food so that every every one of us get nutritious vitaminaceous and good food all the time so our idea is to produce more food and that food should also be qualitative wise it should be good that's more important because the quantitative increase in the food alone is not our aim the qualitative increase increase or the qualitative I mean the maintenance of the quality of the food is also equally important so that has become an ever increasing population another very important word see they say in every 2 minutes every 2 minutes the three children are born in our country so it is an ever increasing problem ever increasing population you have to meet you have to meet their need as only limited land is a fit for cultivation india has to strive to increase yields per unit area from existing farm land so this is a very serious problem see in a particular area people were living in a particular area people were living let's imagine this is the area meant for the life of the people and the in this people this area is meant for the vegetation it is a full of vegetation and this vegetation was supporting this population now due to increase of the population what has happened we have encroached this area and we have, we are we have taken more area to live as a result of that the place the place for the vegetation to grow it is getting reduced so previously less number of people were there and more more amount of field was there but on one side the population is increasing and another side the cultivable land is getting decreased so that's what we say as only limited land you cannot increase the area of the land it is uh, something impossible so only limited land is available but this limited land is occupied by the human being for their house for building houses and different constructions so as only limited land is a fit for cultivation india has to strive to increase the yield so we are left with no other option other than to increase the yield from the limited area so from this limited land let us imagine about 1 million bags of paddy is produced let us imagine for an example and now this area is getting reduced but at the same time the need is increasing so we are left with no other option that we have to increase the yield from the very same limited area so that becomes our main problem in order to fight the menace of hunger and malnutrition we need crops with greater yield and a better nutritive value so that's what i was mentioning so nutritive the food the nutritive value for the food is very very important and also you have to increase the yield so in order to fight the menace of a hunger and malnutrition we need crops with a greater yield and better nutritive value the quantity and the quality of a crops can be improved by modern scientific methods through genetic manipulation called genetic engineering so because of the knowledge that we have got about the genes in the chromosomes 
by doing appropriate manipulations we can increase the yield of the crop not only increasing the yield of the crop so we can produce a disease resistant varieties for example if a crop is produced and if there is going to be a disease attack by a fungus then there will be a loss of the crop so on one side you have to increase the yield on the second on the other side you have to decrease the incidence of the formation of the disease then on a third side when the food production is there people have worked out on the modalities and then they have found out uh, their loss at every stage for example when so much crop is uh, produced in the field in the field itself nearly 20 to 20 percent 22 percentage of the food is lost because of the birds and all the other things so a little amount is reduced by when it is coming from the field to the farmer's hand when in what the food that is coming to the farmer's hand after some time due to the fungal attack or due to the destruction in the storage some more quantity is lost and the amount of the food is reduced to this extent if it is utilized immediately then it is okay otherwise if it has to be stored for a, some more duration there will be still wastage so food production is not only our aim the re reducing this loss is also another very important point if you are able to minimize this wastage then it is equivalent to producing more so electricity also they say see save the electricity and you need not increase the output of the electricity because already sufficient amount is there but because of the wastage we are not able to fully utilize it the same principle applies here also we are having sufficient food but the problem here is it is being wasted at different steps when it, when the food is moving from one hand to another hand there is a heavy loss by the different agents so we must find out a means of preventing this loss that's very important so we have to increase the we have to find out the mechanism to produce a greater yield and that should also have a nutritive value and as i was telling you by genetic engineering methods you can produce better crops and at the same time you have to minimize the wastage however the time old concept of a breeding plants either interspecific or intraspecific to bring out the best hybrid plant in plant breeding programs still remains vague in even today See what is this first I will explain this point on intraspecific and intraspecific then I will come why it is a vague with this point I will come so we have mentioned that uh, we have to conduct an intraspecific cross and intraspecific cross all these things so what is an intraspecific cross when you make a cross between the two species when you make a cross between the two species see in latin inter means inter means between between intra means within intra means within so when you make a cross between two species for example gossypium gossypium it's a variety of a cotton gossypium barbadens barbadens when it is a crossed with gossypium hirsutum hirsutum see what happens one plant will be having one good quality and another one will be having some other good quality you want to bring both the good qualities in one plant okay 
in one plant you want to bring both the good, good qualities of these plants so what do you do you make a cross so this is what is called as a inter specific cross that is it is a cross between two different species this is one species and this is another species okay so this is one species this is a gossypium barbarans this is a gossypium hirsutum this is a species a and species b so when you make a cross between the two it is called as an inter specific cross but remember at the same time it is also an intra generic cross because both of them they belong to the same genus because they belong to the same genus called gossypium it is intra generic but inter specific this is a beautiful example the main questions are being asked very often about this one of the following is what type of cross inter specific intra specific inter generic like that they would have given different answers so a cross between the gossypium barbarans and the gossypium hirsutum is a best example for inter specific cross because it is a cross between two different species but at the same time since the cross is between the two species of the same genus it is called intra generic now we have got intra specific also when you make a cross between the two varieties between the same species then it is called as a intra specific intra specific cross very good for example um, mendel was uh, doing a number of experiments on a pisum sativum one variety and another variety he took a tall variety and crossed it with a dwarf variety so this is what is known as an intra specific cross intra means within within same species one species he took what is that species it is called a pisum sativum in that pisum sativum you have got two varieties and between these two varieties we make a cross now it is called as a intra specific if a pisum sativum is crossed with some other species then it is called a inter specific okay now you, i think now you understand uh, the thing very clearly so you make uh, inter specific crosses and intra specific crosses we have to try different type of crosses and um, still even though we try to do all these uh, things all these uh, things uh, still remain vague because of uh, so many huddles because of uh, so many problems when you make a cross between the two different species you can't say that it will be always uh, successful sometimes the uh, compatibility will be there sometimes the uh, compatibility will not be there you can't say that always uh, an inter specific cross will be successful sometimes uh, even inter generic cross becomes uh, successful but inter specific cross may be a failure attempt so we are it's only our uh, trial and error method but when you cross uh, two different species it is very good it's a uh, fine you are you can bring both the good characters in one plant but many times it is not becoming successful that is the problem so we are making an effort but uh, still it is only in vague we have to make many more atoms by making use of a classic and modern breeding methods new improved crops are obtained with the desirable traits that suit well to the existing environment without polluting or altering it it takes about 12 years involving field trials naming and then multiplication and to release a newly created variety see it also a time consuming process in one day or two days you cannot produce a new crop or a new variety first trials have to be done then it should become when the successful atoms have to be concentrated and then uh, it it should be able to grow well in a field situation after when it is a, when it is establishing itself as a new successful crop then you have to name it and then it has to be released and then on the government side also there is a lot of problem you have to get the concurrence from them and then like that it it, it it is it takes a longer it's a lengthy process it's a time consuming process so it takes a minimum 20, 12 years for uh, yeah, for uh, Uh, for finding out a crop or for you know for, for for introducing a crop in the new environment and that too when the crop is introduced you, see, you should see that it is not doing any harm to the 
existing environment condition that also we have to be very careful so by making use of the classical and the modern breeding methods new improved crops are obtained with the desirable traits as i was telling you plant a will be having one desirable character plant b will be having another desirable char character but both of them will be having another undesirable character also for example the fruit of a may be sweet but at the same time it will be small also so it will not have a market value commercial value will not be there for this fruit but b will be having the fruit is a sour but at the same time it will be large in size okay now what happens you want to mix the both sweet you want to make a fruit which is a larger as well as a sweet one good quality of a if it is mixed with another good quality of a b then it becomes a very easy for us that this will have a larger commercial value economically that is a more viable farmers people will be uh, instead of going for this a crop or b crop they will be going for this crop which will be having the good quality of a and b so it is for that we are making the interspecific cross or intergeneric crosses because we want to bring all the good qualities in one plant so what are the steps in plant breeding plant breeding is the purposeful manipulation of a plant species in order to create desired plant types that are better suited for cultivation give better yield and disease resistant so plant breeding is the purposeful manipulation you do a manipulation you do a change and this is this change is purposeful you you have an aim in your mind you you want to do certain thing you want to manipulate a particular plant in a desired way so it is a purposeful manipulation of a plant species in order to create desired plant what plant you want to make as i was telling you you want to club you want to mix both the sweet and the large fruit the fruit is large and at the same time you want that large fruit to be sweeter in nature so this uh, this is the desired plant you want to produce this a uh, desired plant with a certain manipulations that are better suited for cultivation give better yield and disease resistance that's a more important when a new crop is uh, produced and it is uh, susceptible for a disease then uh, it's a waste see conventional plant breeding has been practiced for thousands of years since the beginning of a human civilization recorded evidence of a plant breeding dates back to 9000 to 11000 years a beautiful statement see the um, initially man before this period say about 15000 years back or even still older 20000 years back he was only a hunter gatherer the evolution of the man it's a beautiful topic in biology for the human studies uh, now before that time he was only what is known as a hunter gatherer in the forest he will be hunting the animals and then he will be gathering the fruits he will be gathering the seeds and he will be leading his livelihood so he he didn't know the mechanism of a cultivation he was not a cultivator he did, he was not a farmer he knows only hunt and he had few weapons which is which was made up of uh, some metals and then rock materials so he was a uh, hunting and he was a uh, gathering and then he was living then when in the civilization came he wanted to he wanted to remain in one place itself and then and then what happened actually the nomadic life started in a particular place the people will come and then live and then they will be in this place for nearly 14 years and in this 14 years period they will exhaust all their resources and after that they will move to another forest and in that forest they will be there for 14 years after that they will once again come back to this original place 
now this would have regained and then now uh, these uh, plants would have come to the flowering fruiting etc so people were moving from one place to another place in search of a food and they didn't know the mechanism of the production of the food so this type of life is what is called as a nomadic life from a hunter gatherer life they moved to the nomadic life and then only the man thought why should i move from place to place and be a, be a nomad and then if i know the technique of cultivating the plants and agricultural crops i can remain in a place throughout my lifetime and then i can eat comfortably that's how the concept of agriculture started and then he became an agriculturalist so he started his man started his life as a hunter gatherer and then he was remaining as a nomadic for quite a long time and then only he became an agriculturalist and then after becoming an agriculturalist he was a farmer and he didn't know much about the scientific knowledge without the scientific knowledge they were doing that and then this agriculture developed as a science and today we know what are all the mechanisms to improve the crop how can you improve the quality of the crop all these mechanisms we know and so this scientific knowledge this agricultural knowledge we want to make use of for improving the crops <coughs> <coughs> so what are the different steps involved in the improvement of the crop first one is a collection of <coughs> variability then evaluation and selection of the parents third one cross hybridization among the selected parents then fourth step is selection and testing of superior recombinants then testing release and commercialization of the new cultivars okay. these are the different steps involved here <coughs> first one is you have to collect the variability see there, there may be a tall plant a dwarf plant plant with red seeds white seeds seeds which are smaller in size smaller with the larger i mean uh, seeds so tastier food non tastier food like that plants are there with different and varied characters varied characters they are and then you have to select this uh, variables and then you have to select which character you want and then you have to find out uh, you have to select the parents which one you want to make as a parent you have to fix and then you have to bring about a hybridization when you do the hybridization then you there will be a mixing of a character and then you have to test for the recombinants and then you have to commercialize the whole process see the very same very simple example of um, mendel's uh, example i will take because you are uh, very familiar with that you have already studied a bit of uh, genetics what he do he took a yellow round variety yellow round variety he crossed it with a green wrinkled variety okay now when you make a cross two plants were of parental nature what are they yellow round and green wrinkled but you see a yeah, new recombinant type of a plants were also produced new to that generation when yellow round is a cross sorry in in f1 generation you will get yellow round yellow round when cross with the green wrinkled you will get hybrid yellow round hybrid yellow round and when this hybrid yellow round f1 plants are in bred you get yellow round yellow wrinkled yellow wrinkled green round 
and green wrinkled now you see this yellow round and green wrinkled are parental varieties are these two varieties are already existing in nature but these two varieties or uh, these two varieties are produced in the nature for the first time so a recombination will always help in the production of the new species you took only two plants yellow round and green wrinkled but two more new varieties have been produced in the nature because of this hybridization so hybridization always helps in the mixing of characters okay that's what uh, we have i have told you so selection and testing of the superior recombination and then testing recombinant varieties we have to look for because the parental characters will be there already in the nature then it has to be tested it has to be released and then it has to be finally commercialized by giving a name and that is now it will be called as a cultivar Cult cultivar cultivar means variety var means variety cultivable variety is called as a cultivar okay so what is this green revolution it is a beautiful concept <coughs> just like you have got you have got a different words a green revolution white revolution blue revolution etc what is a green revolution a revolution that has been brought about in agricultural science we call as a green revolution and a revolution that we have brought about in the milk production by using the cow cattle buffaloes and all these animals it is called as a white revolution and an increase in the production of the fishes and in the marine wealth we call as a blue revolution so different revolutions have taken place to feed the mouth of the man because of this increasing population and we are going to concentrate mainly on the green revolution that has taken place on the agricultural side so traditional farming can only yield a limited biomass as a food for humans and animals better management practices and increase in acreage can increase yield but only to a limited extent plant breeding as a technology has helped to increase the yield to a very large extent world health world health organization in india has not heard of sorry sorry who in india has not heard of a green revolution which was responsible for our country it should be a question mark who has not heard who has not heard of a green revolution which was responsible for our country so traditional farming can yield only to a limited biomass only limited increase could be there by the traditional farming a traditional farming cannot all of a sudden increase the agricultural product to a desirable quantity it's not at all possible and that is possible only because of the breeding technology when you are applying a technology you can produce uh, more crops and also you can produce uh, better yielding crops you can produce a uh, disease resistant crops you can produce a uh, salt resistant crops like that a different type of crops you can produce all these have contributed for what is uh, called as a green revolution and in india who has not heard about this uh, concept of green revolution everybody knows what a green revolution is okay fine by introducing specialized technology plant breeders are now able to develop more crops which they multiply and supply them to the growers improvement in the genetic makeup of the plant is called plant breeding so it's a very beautiful definition what is a plant breeding improvement in the genetic makeup improvement in the genetic makeup is called as the plant breeding okay so you breed the plant you do it with your aim you do with the aim so while you are while you are doing while you are breeding two plants 
you don't simply do it it is with the aim of improving the quality so improvement of the genetic makeup is essential and then only it should be rightly called as a plant breeding so plant breeding is the improvement of your crop or improve by making up the or by bringing about the change in the genetic makeup okay so what are the different aspects of the plant breeding the plant breeding includes creation of useful variation in in the cultivable crops then number 2 selection of a better crops then conducting carrying out breeding experiments to access the quality of the crop and the release of the variety after their extensive multiplication so these are all the different steps involved in the plant breeding the aims of a plant breeding what are the aims of a plant breeding the first and the foremost aim in the plant breeding is to create useful variation in a crop plant the first and foremost aim is plant breeding to create the variation in the crop improvement this can be achieved by the following measures bringing wild food crops to cultivation so this is the first one so see for example wheat oats and then many cereal crops like uh, barley and then these crops bajra all these crops these wild food wild food crops can be once again brought to cultivation so bringing these wild crops to cultivation once again this is a, this is a, a very important step in the plant breeding obtaining genes from the desirable plants or related species for example seeds from the various parts of the world this can be this this is another aim for our plant breeding then the fifth one is you can introduce the plants from the nearby regions or even from other countries for improvement for example cauliflower tomato potato soya beans all these crops are only the introduced crops from the foreign countries now what we think as the indian crop many crops since we are we are acclimatized we are we have become familiar with the plants we think that these plants they belong to india now we are wrong many crops we have it has been introduced from foreign countries when britishers came to india they were <clears throat> very comfortable only with the food crops that they had in their country so what they thought they cannot manage with the indian crops one once they come to the uh, to our place so along with them when they came to india they brought their own food material for example carrot beetroot nulkol cabbage all these chili even chili all these plants were brought by them to india as soon as they came here they cultivated all these plants in a very cool climatic conditions say at the in the himalayas in uti kodaikanal and in the places like this they first acclimatized those plants so they it was growing there for nearly about of uh, 10 to 15 years after that slowly it is spread to the different parts of our country so many plants like this were brought by the britishers while they came to india and during the period of uh, um, mohal invasion when people from arabia when they came they the mohal the mohal emperors they brought their own crops when they came to india like that portuguese they brought some more crops when they came to india like that people when they came to india when they were trading with india and when they were colonizing in india they brought their own food crops also to be to be very comfortable here and then these plants were introduced at different stages in india 
so the uh, the agricultural crop wealth increased day by day the, it's uh, i think uh, we should say that it is only a benefit of some invasions we we uh, we encountered a lot of uh, problems because of the invasions but this is in one way a good thing they brought their own food food crops and then it they were introduced in, in our country so such crops potato tomato all these crops now you say the potato has become one of the indian crops we don't find any difference so i have been has become similarly cauliflower but at one stage all these crops were introduced only in to india and about uh, uh, 200 or 300 years back nobody would have heard these crops in india okay so by employing certain plant breeding techniques new varieties are developed for example maize sorghum then cotton then sunflower these are all so by plant breeding techniques new varieties have been produced in all these things maize different varieties are there even sorghum different varieties are there by different plant breeding techniques we have produced different varieties see even in when you just taken you got a so many varieties of cotton long stapled cotton short stapled cotton napal cotton like that different type of a cotton is a cotton varieties are available and you won't believe that in i mean uh, rice or paddy you have got uh, 2000 2000 crops 2000 rice varieties are there okay and uh, at, uh, even in india they say to the 2000 uh, main crops are there at a world level still more crops should be there so and all these crops have been produced as a result of the plant breeding techniques then auto polyploidy and allopolyploidy is a one of the very important steps so polyploidy is a very important step in the plant breeding then by inducing mutation what's called the mutation breeding mutation breeding we use the physical and the chemical mutagens to uh, improve the crops so these are all the different methods by which we can improve the crops now all these uh, things uh, cannot be done in one day so one or two methods by which we have improved the crops we will discuss in the other uh, we will discuss now and the rest of the things will be discussed in the other class So production of a haploids by the application of a plant tissue culture of another ovary of, of anther and ovary. Improvement of a nutritional quality by genetic engineering. This is this fortified rice, iron rich rice and carotene rich rice. These are all very good examples. Fortified rice. Iron rich rice. You say that uh, rich is, uh, rice is only uh, very, what is uh, called as uh, more, uh, and uh, it is containing more carbohydrate, and it is not having any protein. So, uh, because of this uh, bad quality that uh, whenever you are eating too much of rice, you are e eating carbohydrate, and uh, your body is not getting sufficient uh, vitamin and uh, sufficient uh, protein, different uh, rice varieties have been produced uh, today. See? iron rich rice variety has been introduced then similarly carotin rich rice variety has been produced all these things have been produced because of the genetic engineering techniques genetic engineering methods development of a disease resistant varieties drought resistant varieties saline resistant varieties these are all the different resistant varieties that our scientists are trying to produce because once you find a solution for all these problems then it becomes very easy for us to fight this problem of the food problem now just to look at this diagram this is uh, india a portion of the india bottom portion i have drawn see it is surrounded by sea on all the three sides this area along the eastern east coast and then the west coast coast this is this comes to nearly approximately more than 1000 miles 1000 miles 1000 kilometers you can say 1000 sorry 1000 kilometers and this also 1000 kilometers okay and from the sea 
up to say some um, five to six miles or six kilometers you can't cultivate any paddy because of the salinity only after this level you can have a paddy cultivation you cannot have because of this seashore you can't have in the seashore the paddy will not grow now if a paddy variety if a rice variety could be developed which can be cultivated by resisting the salinity then how much of a field how much of a area could be brought under the cultivation you just imagine for 1000 kilometers and 5 kilometers of breadth this much area could be brought under cultivation for our paddy if a saline resistant variety is able to be developed by our indian scientists but unfortunately they are striving hard for past 20 years but still we are not able to produce a saline resistant variety that that becomes a, a dream that remains a dream even today we are not able to do it of course some of the disease resistant varieties we are able to produce even drought resistant varieties we are not able to make and saline resistant variety it is a very very difficult to produce so but still work is going on and our scientists are working very hard very very hard to produce these varieties see i am just going to classify the type of the um, uh, crop improvement by, by taking one principle the methods of improvement where only one plant is involved okay without two plants so mutation is one then protoplasmic fusion then polyploidy chromosomal alterations genetic engineering these are all the techniques where you take only one plant of course a tissue culture also okay so you take only one plant and on that plant you work and then you manipulate you would bring about a lot of a changes and then you make alterations and then you improve the crop okay so you induce a mutation the physical mutation chemical mutation etc and then you bring a protoplasmic fusion and then you induce a polyploidy you induce you make some chromosomal changes you make some genetic engineering by tissue culture method you do uh, i mean uh, certain techniques by which you will be able to improve the crops so in this these are the methods in which only one plant is involved see these are all some of the plant breeding techniques where more than one plant is involved so you are uh, by doing a moss selection by hybridization programs and for back cross a repeated back cross will also yield a better crop sometimes we we say back cross is very dangerous but still back cross is helping and then interspecific higher heterosis hybrid vigor and intraspecific crosses just now we explained what is the difference between a interspecific and intraspecific crosses so in all these techniques two plants or more plants are involved so what are the different methods of a crop improvement broadly i am going to i have discussed it under this the following heading first one is a selection in selection you have got a mass selection pure line selection and clonal selection then the second one is introduction introducing the plant from the foreign countries just now we discussed that hybridization you cross the two plants and then you improve the variety then third one i mean uh, fourth one is uh, protoplasmic fusion heterosis polyploidy breeding mutation breeding and breeding for the disease resistant and then drought resistant saline resistant etc the different type of uh, resistant varieties so these are all the methods different methods for the crop improvement we are going to study one after another as i was telling you i will not be able to do all the things in one class perhaps in uh, Uh, two classes we will be able to finish this so selection is one method of a crop improvement hybridization is another one the beautiful diagram to show how many methods of a plant improvement is there then the 
mutation breeding is there and then of course the polyploidy is also there so polyploidy mutation selection and hybridization these are the different techniques by which you can improve the quality of your crop so first one i am taking selection what is a selection it's one of the oldest procedures in which individual plants or groups of plants are sorted out from mixed population thus eliminating the undesirable ones so plants or group of plants is very important so you select a few plants or a group of plants from a variety of plants and by using those plants you further proceed so selection methods are those of three types namely mass selection pure line selection and then clonal selection selection is one of the best methods for crop improvement i tell you what's a mass selection <coughs> In this method, plants are selected based on their desirable morphological characters, that is a phenotype. Their seeds are composite or mixed and the progenies are grown in mosses. They are not individually tested. So, plants are always selected on a growth level, on a moss level. You select, you just select a field, you visit about 10 uh, fields, you select the best field and, and you work on that particular field. So plants are selected on a moss and then you from that moss you do some breeding and then you select it from one generation to another generation. So su successive selection is uh, taking place generation after generation in that. Then pure line selection. A pure line is a collection of a plants obtained as a result of the repeated self pollination from a single homozygous individual. So, a plant A is uh, taken and then you self-fertilize, self-pollination and then you get uh, what is known as a A1 plant and this A1 is self-fertilized self to get A2 plant and then they are still fertilized to get A3 plants like that. So, continuous self-fertilization will sometimes uh, give rise to better crops. So, self-fertilization is uh, dangerous and it, is, it will lead to the deterioration of the standard. But it is not always uh, true. Sometimes it will result in some of the uh, better qualities also. Similarly, back cross also. So when you take you take a plant A and then plant B, then you get a plant C as a result of that. Then this C will be cross back crossed to the B. So this is what is called as a back cross one. This back cross 1 will be still crossed to B to get a back cross 2. And then these plants will be once again back crossed to get a, a third generation called a back cross 3. Now these crops will be once again crossed to the parent to produce a back cross 4. Like that plants are continuously successively back crossed to their original parents to get sometimes it will also give rise to a new variety. Follow trial and error method. We do a, a number of uh, trials for this. Okay. So crops like uh, sugarcane, potato, tea, banana and uh, certain species of grasses are uh, asexually propagated and uh, produce a very poor seeds. Based on their phenotypic appearance, the method of uh, clone selection is employed to select improved variety from a mixed population. Introduction. See, by the introduction we are able to get more crops as I was telling you I mean crops have been introduced from different countries by the different people at different stages so maize tobacco tomato potato brinjal all these crops have been introduced from America China and Australia introduced varieties sometimes do not get adjusted or acclimatized easily with our local environment it takes some time for these introduced crops to settle but finally they will settle down and then good things will happen and a new crop we will be able to get in our country this, has been, this is happening for the past i mean 200 to 300 years so nothing to be worried about it source plants for habitation or those introduced from other countries like america china and australia they are just to new neurons slowly and so essential to select a suitable and a desirable plant example Fasciolus mungo a variety from china which didn't give good yield and produced dull colored seeds 
okay so these are all the uh, certain methods by which uh, the, the the crop could be introduced by the introduction of course the the lecture is incomplete we have got uh, some more methods of a uh, plant bedding we have to see if you just uh, go to the slide uh, we will understand that uh, so this uh, selection up to introduction we have studied here so from hybridization and the other things namely protoplasm fusion heterosis everything this will be taken up in another class okay fine that's good so very uh, thank you very much for your patient sharing and then if i got any doubt you are open to ask any number of questions regarding this thank you my dear children thank you